Hello my soccer universe. Well, should be no surprise to what I'm wearing Liverpool with the big win uh, this weekend. This time around I did not do two separate videos, one for Saturday and Sunday and packed pack them together because I only watched four games. Very little, but I, to be honest, when I looked at the schedule, three games really deserved my full attention, given that we had a big family party and I was actually quite done uh, Saturday evening. Not a surprise that I didn't watch more. So we came home in time that I can watch the Klassiker and I have to say this was not much of a game because it was all Bayern all the way. Um, Lewandowski scoring two uh, and having a great scene where he <laughs> stops the ball with a karate kick. I think Dortmund were lucky to be only 1-0 down at the half. Not that Bayern was all that great, I think it was more Dortmund not finding a way to deal with Bayern. And Bayern has some renewed energies seemingly with the coaching change now. It's a little bit more clicking. You had Müller in uh, instead of Coutinho. So, you know, um, maybe less tinkering, maybe more of what used to work. And suddenly the team looks much better. Uh, Gnabry uh, shortly after half makes it 2-0. And when Lewandowski makes it 3-0, it's done. Uh, at that point, I think Dortmund had only one real chance through Hakimi, who should have made the goal there, make it 2-1, give themselves a little bit of a chance, but nope. Uh, Hummers even makes an own goal, like a rather stupid one, because I mean the goalkeeper was right there to get the ball. Uh, Dortmund in Munich, as of late, it's a horror story there. Uh, they score little and they get beaten by a lot. So, um, yeah, with uh, Gladbach, Winning on Sunday, then 3 1, and uh, Dortmund losing. I mean, uh, Leipzig was, uh, is winning now. Gladbach is four points ahead of Bayern. But those, uh, if Bayern plays like that, we know exactly who's becoming champion. There will be Bayern and no one else. But let's see how this goes. That was it for me on Sunday. I saw the highlights of uh, Real Madrid. Uh, winning 4 0 at Eibar, and most importantly, uh, the Messi show against Celta Vigo where, I mean, they get a penalty, Messi of course scores, then Celta with a wonderful free kick uh, equalizes and you know you can see the nervousness in the camp now but Messi is kind of holding my beer, free kick from far out and he puts it into the net 2-1 in stoppage time of the first half. Beginning of the second half, similar story, again a free kick, Messi puts it in. He scores a hat-trick from dead ball situations. Um, Unbelievable. It's unreal how well he's taking free kicks. Uh, he might have lost a little bit of his speed and agility, but I think he increased his precision uh, with free kicks exponentially. And then uh, the Eda fourth and Barca runs away 4-1 winners with Real Sociedad on Friday only managing a one, a one draw. What's wrong with La Sociedad? Uh, yeah. Um, it's Barcelona and Real Madrid again on the top of the table. Granada loses to Valencia, so there you go. Uh, Saturday, first Lusk. You gotta watch the European fighters. Uh, and also, it was not that great of a game. I mean, the first half it was one-way soccer towards the goal of Admira. Uh, but Lask didn't, you know, they only created, I think, four or five chances. I mean, that, some of those were quite good. I remember a shot by Michal that should have been under the bar. It just got that much over. But in the 30th, Goeginger gets the ball. Um, first fakes a shot, doesn't take it, and then takes it, and it's 1-0. And it probably should have been 2-0 at the half. And then I think they got tired from the game against Eindhoven because in the second half they didn't show much. I think they had only one or two shots and Admira with the better players could have made it 1-1 easily. Um, but it didn't. They hang on to the win. 1-0. I then saw a little bit of Wolves uh, against Aston Villa. Uh, I think the last third tournament which ended 2-1 for Wolves. Uh, two, Wolves were 2-0 up in the stoppage time. Uh, Therese G gets a goal that was given by the goal line technology. Uh, and yeah, then it was all about the big one. Liverpool against Manchester City. And this was the best game of the weekend. It was intense, especially for the first third tournament, where right from the get-go you thought that the City is trying to stifle Liverpool in their own half pressing high, getting uh, really past them. And then one really controversial scene uh, where the ball hits 
uh, Trent Alexander Arnold on the hand, the hand a little bit like that outstretched, it goes here and here. What I referee doesn't give it, and I, I, I actually at that point I watched they have on Sky the scout the feed where you see actually more like a stadium spectator. And that was, I only watched for the first five minutes, so I didn't get really the handball, uh, but I switched on over to see that. Um, to be honest, you could really see how Liverpool is then quick and expansively uh, attacking. And I could see that uh, Fabinho is uh, stepping up and I thought, wow, if he could take a shot and he takes the shot and it's a laser going into the net. I was really beautiful to see. I, I, if they have this, I think I have to watch more often. Uh, the scouting feed because I think you see much better. I actually like in a stadium when you can see when you, in a big stadium when you see uh, a sit high, you can see much better how the players are, how every, everything's developing. So uh, that I can only recommend. I did not watch the entire game because I, you don't get all the details. This is a little bit the downside of the whole thing. Anyway, uh, yeah. With a laser make may makes it one nil. Of course, City completely upset and they go to VAR and nothing is overturned. It's England after all. But I think uh, the ball first ricochets off the hand of a City player and then goes to Trent Alexander Arnold. I think that might have been given. I heard the explanation was that the uh, hand the arm was in a natural position. Now give 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 him a break everywhere else. If the arm is like that and the ball hits here, it's a penalty. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting, but this is not a little detail, uh, I thought a handball is also not, should not be used in the build-up to a goal, I mean, since there was a counter-attack right thereafter, but yeah, the handball was not given. It's weird. City, of course, unabated, keeps pressing forward, keeps pressing forward, <laughs> Liverpool Though with one pass, I mean, what's the broke down kind of this first pressing line? Then they had free go, and again, it's a wonderful ball from Robertson that hits Salah, who is just by hair not offside, takes a header into the net, and after 12 minutes, it's 2 0 Liverpool. Uh, it was really City pressing Liverpool, making the goals. Uh, that crazy uh, game. Uh, if City had chances, it was mostly from free kicks where Liverpool, the Liverpool defense really did well with putting an offside trap or, you know, have uh, relying in, in the goalkeeper. I think defensively Liverpool was super sound yesterday and they could hold the 2-0 um, at the half. Yes, City probably should have scored one, but um, didn't go that far. Um, second half, yeah, <laughs> Anderson, Mane, 3-0. And the game was done, and I'm thinking, yeah, this was a good, good, good game. But it ran a little bit of the um, Barcelona Liverpool, the first game, uh, where we went the other way around, where the game was quite open. Maybe the other team even better, but um, one team is scoring all the goals. And I was also thinking at that time, yeah, all the, the, the classic goals are in one side. This is turning out to be one sided. And it, the game really, with this 3 0 for a longer time, was kind of this was when it took a little bit of a breather. It was still a really good game, but it took a little bit of a breather because it was kind of the, the suspense was out, out of it. Well, Bernardo Silva made a little bit more suspense by putting one in in the 78th, uh, and shortly thereafter, another handball in the box. Guardiola going berserk, da, 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 da. absolutely going berserk, and understandably, honestly. Uh, it's not given again, again, England. And yeah, if City would have made a second goal, uh, I think this would have been a lot of pressure there, but in the end, Liverpool hangs on, maybe had a small chance to make it four as well. Liverpool is the winner and City only falls, uh, falls now in fourth place. Nine points behind Liverpool, Liverpool eight points clear at the top. Um, it seems to be Liverpool's year, but you know, maybe uh, only, we probably not even, are we a quarter in? Yeah, roughly like that. Well, it's still a lot of games to be played. So uh, we hold off. Liverpool enjoyed uh, last year Christmas a sizable lead and then uh, did not hang on. Uh, so the last few minutes of Parma-Roma, where Parma took at the point a deserved lead. Roma, again, a disappointment. They are up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, they try to get something, but Parma in the end makes it 2-0. 
then more or less uh, watched N NFL and then the Juve Milan. And I hate to see Milan play in black pants. <laughs> it's just something that doesn't connect with me. Uh, the picture feed was horrible because the red did not show, so the, the Milan looked even darker. And I have to say, um, it was probably Milan's best game this season. And it went exactly how it always goes with Juventus. They always pull out a great game at Juventus. And they always manage to lose. Uh, again, John Anoglu was pretty good. Susan was pretty good. Piantek, no. He had a chance, a header. You gotta bury that one. You gotta bury the one, not put it uh, to the fans in the in the curva. Uh, that was for me a disappointment. Um, Benacer was actually doing quite well. Uh, so Milan had the better of chances. I mean, yes, Iguain had also also one that Don Donnarumma saved a little bit uh, awkwardly. Uh, Juventus had more of possession, but I think overall it was an even game. It was more a meeting of two teams on the same level, which if you look at the table is not the case because Milan is downright atrocious uh, this season. So they finally show something, but again, a little bit lax in defending, a little bit... It was not a good game. It was not a good game, game at all, but given what I've seen from Milan, at least in the first half, I was uh, quite content. Um, the other thing is, of course, Ronaldo. I don't know what's happening with him. I heard he maybe has, has, has an injury, but Ronaldo looks like he hit a cliff and he's not falling down. That's how he looks to me. If he has an injury, well, why why is he playing? Uh, that's, I think, at the moment, from what I see, I would not count Ronaldo among the 10 best players in the world. The guy who came on for Ronaldo, though, that might be different, sir. That's, that's Dybala. And, yeah, Milan again tries in the second half. It was, as I said, it was not a good game. It was a really slow game. Um, I don't know what Juventus is doing, but Juventus always gets the job done. Jalen Oglu, tests from wide range shots. Uh, Jason, I think this was a personal duel, but I never thought that any of those shots were really dangerous. I think they should have been a little bit more better placed. And then Dybala walks past Romagnoli and puts it in the net in the 70th. And I never had the feeling that Milan can get back, although they played well. Scoring goals for Milan is a problem. Even when Leo came on, um, they had a few small chances, but you know, as I said, it's always the same uh, with Milan playing at Juventus. Always the same. Milan playing well, but it's just too little. And if you're not clinically, you have no chance. And Juventus makes their chances. They have the better squad. They get the win. Um, and yeah, I just cannot have three games. When I watch only three games, I cannot have three games going my way. The trend is that always the home team wins. So yeah, I didn't see the Seville derby, which ended with a 2-1 wheel win for Sevilla. But yeah, I watch highlights and you'll get in the uh, tomorrow, probably, latest Wednesday, you get my big roundup video. I have to see, I'm uh, a little bit health-wise not good, so I might uh, postpone this because we anyway have an international break coming up, so I might make a better video out of that one. Anyway, let, let me know what you watched. This was all I watched. It's actually a short video, so a little bit surprising. Uh, clinically, I have to say the, the two top tokens were dominated by clinical performances by the home teams in red. That's all that I can say. Drop me a line below what you watched. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.